Ladies and gentlemen, EV, the brand new real-time renderer uh, that comes built in to Blender 2.8. Um, understandably, a lot of people are very excited about this because it renders pretty good results um, in real time, <laughs> right? Um, if you're familiar with Unreal Engine, Unity, Marmoset, all those game engine um, things, they, uh, they function in a very similar way to EV. So the way it calculates light, the reflections, the shadows, all that kind of thing, um, it's taking shortcuts. So it's not gonna be as accurate as something like Cycles, which Blender still has, um, but for a lot of cases, um, it's good enough and maybe you can get by for a certain project uh, just using EV. So EV is not to replace Cycles, um, they still coexist, so you've still got EV, you've still got Cycles, um, but, uh, but yeah, you, you, it's designed to be an alternative to use when it makes sense. So um, it's, it's not as accurate and it's not as realistic. Um, but there's cases where that's not important. So say, for example, you're making a kid's TV show. Each episode's 20 minutes long. There's 20 episodes in a season. There's no reason to use cycles because the cost of sending all that to a render farm is gonna be astronomical. And kids aren't gonna appreciate the realism anyway. So in that case, you could just use EV. It's gonna be real time, it's gonna be good enough, and you're gonna deliver your project on time. However, another case, maybe you were, I don't know, building VFX and you had to have a dinosaur that really was embedded into a frame for like a feature film. Well, in that case, it's got to look photorealistic. You got to have proper shadows and lighting and subsurface scattering and reflections. It's got to look and make sense. So in that case, you might use cycles or you would <laughs> use cycles or another unbiased rendering engine. However, the really cool thing about EV um, and, and I believe this is an industry first, is that all of your shaders, everything you do with EV will also work with cycles um, and vice versa. So as an example, if I just take this and I switch it to cycles, if I give it a minute, there we go, uh, you can see that it works. I haven't updated or changed any materials or shaders. Um, it just works, which is phenomenal because that means that you can, Maybe while you're building it, um, you can work with EV, have all your materials and everything update in real time, make you know creative decisions as you go. And then when it comes time to do your rendering, you know you're gonna need some photorealism. So you switch it to cycles. Brilliant. Uh, that's just, it's gonna make working um, in 3D, it's, it's gonna be different now. It's gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna be able to work a lot faster. Um, and then when it comes, when you need that realism, you're gonna jump over to cycles. Um, so. Um, in this video, by the way, this model, by the way, if you're wondering like, oh man, you should make a character tutorial because <laughs> I get that a lot. Um, it's not mine. <laughs> I just purchased it off Turbo Squid for like 300 bucks or something. It looks great though. Like the realism is, uh, it's really, uh, it's really nice. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay. So. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how, how it works. Okay, so the render engine is defined right here. It's no longer at the top of the screen, which I don't know, I kind of preferred it when it was up there because I knew what state I was in. Uh, but anyways, it's down here. And uh, to look at it, you just go into rendered view mode. Okay, and there you go. Um, pretty cool. So um, some settings you're probably gonna wanna enable uh, with your lamp you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got contact shadows turned on. Cause without it, you'll probably notice like, you get like problems like this, where there's not a shadow where there should be. Again, limitation of using a game engine. Um, and you can also, you know, increase the softness of it. The shadows are probably the weakest part of a, uh, a game engine or a real time engine like EV. Um, it does a fakery where it takes the edge of it and it blurs it, but it's not gonna allow you to use, um, for example, a mesh. So if you have a mesh and then you use a, whatchamacallit, an emission shader, right? It's not gonna have any effect on it, okay? So you could, you could do whatever you want with this, but that's not gonna affect your scene in any way. Um, and you might think like, oh, they should just add that feature. Well, I asked them that on Twitter. <laughs> I asked a developer and uh, he said that it's just, it's it's one of the limitations of game engines that like it doesn't do, um, 
yeah, it doesn't do like mesh, mesh objects. So with cycles, you can see that it actually works properly. This is a big, large object. So it's creating a soft shadow on the ground there. And then that will reflect that, uh, you know, as the object gets bigger and then as it gets smaller, you can see the, the shadows get softer and softer. Um, so that's, that's what an unbiased rendering engine is good at. Um, a game engine like EV, I mean, you could try to fake it by, you know, using lots of light objects um, but it's not going to do as good a job. And at a certain point, if you add enough light objects, it's going to be so costly to your render times, you're almost better using cycles um, anyway. Um, now there's a bunch of other settings here, which we can turn on, which will increase our realism. This isn't a very good scene to demo it though. So let me load up the scene that I gave you at the start of the uh, video series for 2.8. Um, okay, so the first one to turn on is uh, is Bloom, okay? You might, you won't use this all the time and you shouldn't with great power. Um, but uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna apply a glow effect um, to objects that are bright enough. So you can change the threshold of how bright something needs to be before it will appear and use it correctly because you don't wanna make everything bright or else you end up with this hazy effect over the whole scene. Like it's sort of like squinting through like uh, sunglasses that have got Vaseline smeared on them or something. It just looks odd. So make sure you put it on the right thing. Uh, then you've got depth of field, which if you go to a camera, and then if I select my camera and then go to my camera settings, depth of field, let's make this object the one that's in focus. And then I turn my f-stop down to something that I guess makes sense. And there you go. So this isn't gonna be as accurate as cycles, by the way. Um, it won't be as accurate. You'll sort of get some bleeding sometimes, things going through, but again, good enough. So uh, then you've also got subsurface scattering. I don't have any in this scene, so I don't know why it just updated, but anyway. Screen space reflections. So you can see the metallic uh, text has got some proper reflections now. Again, not gonna be as good as cycles. We can actually compare them if we switch to cycles. Oh, okay, <laughs> we won't compare it. Uh, so <laughs> that's uh, the one limitation of switching between cycles and EV at the moment is that the lamps aren't quite right. They're not quite matching because uh, a lamp in, uh, oh, I'll turn on my overlay. If I have a lamp here, <sighs> select my lamp. Uh, like if you're using nodes in cycles, uh, if you've got animation, which I currently do for my firework effect, um, it's just not gonna pick up on that. So you'll find that when you switch to cycles, that's the one thing you often need to change is your lighting. I assume though that's being worked on from what I've heard, um, that's that's a feature that is, uh, that is being worked on. Okay, so let me go back, go back to EV. All right, um, another one is motion blur. That's not currently working for objects. It's only working for camera motion. Um, I don't know if it is actually gonna be fixed for the official 2.8, but I'm assuming at some point, 2.81 or whenever it happens. And then of course, we have volumetrics. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it wouldn't be an EV demo without some volumetrics. So uh, for example, um, how, how, I, how I had this, this hazy effect is just in the world settings. I've got a volume scatter node plugged in uh, if it's not plugged in, then you don't get any volumetrics. And of course you plug it in, you get some. Um, it, it's really cool. Like it's, it's understandably, like it's a, it's a thing that everyone loves about EV because cycles, when you've got volumetrics, things just go really slow. It's really noisy and it's really problematic. But in EV, it almost looks better, right? It's clear. You obviously, you don't have as accurate, like maybe shadows through the volumetrics, but you do have some. Right, you've got a little bit, um, and it's good enough for most scenes. So um, it's very cool. You've also got things like you can bake indirect lighting. It's not as good um, as Cycles. I'm hoping that at some point it has a bake light map option like Unreal and Unity, where it will actually just like cast that light from Cycles maybe um, onto the objects without you needing to unwrap things and bake things manually. I think once it has that, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be super powerful. But that just about does it for EV. Um, but there's a bunch of other things that's added in 2.8 that I haven't mentioned. I mean, you could probably do like a whole two hour series on it if you wanted to, um, but it's the beta, so I'm not gonna do that. Things are gonna change. Um, but a couple of things I'll mention right now that, uh, that I really like. Uh, one of them is multi-object editing. So if you've got two objects like this, 
um, and you select them both, you can now edit both of them inside the same edit space. Uh, which previously you couldn't. You could only edit one at a time. So that's going to be super convenient. Um, you know, when you've got things like car doors and they need to line up exactly, you can select them both and edit them both at the same time. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, you've also got quick favorites. So if you find a setting that you like, um, like say, I don't know, snapping, um, I've got overlays here. You, oh yeah, you right click it and then you say add to quick favorites, right? So you do that on everything that you like. Um, oh, that one you can't. How about that? Some things you can't. Anyways, then if you hit Q, you get a list of the things that you've got in your quick favorites. And then you can quickly access them um, without having to, uh, to manually find them. So that's really handy. Um, a bunch of other things. We've got IES lighting, which is... Um, I'll put a video, um, some links in the description so you can watch them. Um, but that's for basically adding like down lighting that those like throwing light patterns onto walls. I think it's only for cycles at the moment. I don't know if it's going to be added in EV. Principled hair, which also looks really cool. Uh, I'll put a link to that as well. Um, and again, I think that's only uh, cycles. I don't know if it's going to be an EV. At least I couldn't get it to work in EV. A proper ambient occlusion node, which is really handy. I've already started to use it um, for adding things like dirt and grunge to uh, to surfaces without having to do any painting. Uh, cryptomats. That's cryptomats. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it was actually developed by Tangent Studio for the next gen film, um, and uh, it's mostly for like quick color masking for putting in After Effects, which is going to be helpful to a lot of people in productions. Dependency graphs. That's a big one. A lot of people, I've been hearing those two words for like five, six years now. It's a big feature a lot of people want, uh, mainly animators and riggers. I believe, I don't really understand the feature myself, but it's really handy to those people. Um, and what else is there? I think that's, that's some of the big ones. Um, if you like everything here, because I mean, 2.8 is, you know, understatement of the year. It's, it's an improvement, <laughs> right? There's a lot of features that are, I mean, not only new for Blender, but oftentimes actually new for the industry. It's uh, it's pretty exciting what the Blender Foundation has done here. So if you uh, if you want to support it and help help innovations like this happen, um, consider donating to the Blender Development Fund. I know everyone's got bills to pay, and I don't want to pressure anybody, but this is an easy way that you can help Blender to keep doing things like this, um, help it stay competitive against software like Houdini and Algorithmic and Substance. They've just got huge amounts of money to throw at their development teams. So by just uh, setting a, uh, a membership amount here, um, you're going to be supporting it. It's going to be a monthly thing, and you're just going to forget about it, and you'll know that you'll be contributing uh, to Blender. Um, so it's, it's, you know, small, small amount, but it's going to do a lot. And if we can get it up to, you know, five developers, that's going to be fantastic. Hopefully 10 someday as well. Uh, Polygon, we're doing our part down there in a corporate silver account. Um, and I want to know if you, if you join the dev fund, uh, after listening to this, let me know in the comments. Um, it's, it's good to know, uh, when people are joining, uh, to help support Blender. So, uh, click the link in the description. You can uh, you can find this page here, um, and that's it, guys. As usual, if you find uh, this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch another video by me, um, I recommend watching my um, filmic video. If you haven't seen that yet, um, there's a the the link is up there. You can watch that video next. Um, but that's another feature that's turned on by default now in Blender. It's got that as the default setting, filmic. Um, if you want to understand what that is all about, I recommend watching that video. So I will see you in that video. Otherwise, thanks for watching.